One of the most popular descenders for caving is the U-frame micro rack. These descenders handle a wide range of conditions with a great deal of friction control, which makes them a good option for both short and long drops on a variety of rope types. They are shorter and lighter, with a lower attachment point than traditional J-frame racks, which makes them a good choice for multi-drop vertical caves and as an alternative to bobbins in a frog vertical system. U-frame racks are made from stainless steel bar stock that is typically between 7 and 10 millimeters in diameter, and they have a fixed brake bar at the top that is kept in place by a pair of lock nuts. They are available in a variety of lengths with anywhere from 3 to 6 brake bars. The U-shape and closed loop make these racks much stronger than the traditional open J-frame rack. The most commonly used version of the U-frame rack for caving is the 4-bar micro rack. There are several manufacturers including Bassett Metal Studios and Seattle Manufacturing Corporation. The BMS racks are extremely well made and in widespread use by cavers. They are equipped with round, hollow, stainless steel bars, and the top bar is usually a single-sided hyperbar that makes it easier to add additional friction when needed, or more easily perform a lock-off. These racks may also have an optional second hyperbar rigged upside down as the third bar that provides more options for increasing friction, which may be useful in rescue situations. BMS micro racks are designed for use with 10 to 11 millimeter rope. They can be used with smaller diameter ropes, but in that case, the dual hyperbar model is recommended. The first and third bars are captive and do not swing open, so the rope is attached by inserting a bite of rope behind the second and fourth bars and closing them. The BMS micro racks are available in a short frame, which is 8.5 inches long, and a long frame, which is 10.5 inches long. The long frame version allows the bars to be spread further apart to reduce friction. This is an advantage for lighter weight cavers or when descending fat or dirty ropes. The long frame rack is slightly bigger and heavier, but I would recommend this version of the device for anyone under 200 pounds. The rack can be connected to a central myone on the caving harness using either a locking carabiner or an oval myone. The advantage of an oval myone is increased strength and resistance to crossloading. If using an oval myone, use an 8mm long frame or a standard 10mm so it can be attached or removed from the central D myone without opening the gate or removing the chest ascender and cow's tails. If using a locking carabiner, additional care must be taken to avoid crossloading when the rappel device is first weighted. This is one important reason for conducting a safety check with a lanyard or sender attached to the rope or anchor prior to fully committing to the descender. To connect a micro rack to the rope, swing open the second and fourth brake bars. Insert a bite of rope between the first and third bars and close the second bar inside of the bite of rope. Remove any slack in the rope, then insert another bite of rope through the frame below the third bar and swing the fourth bar closed. Great care must be taken with all brake bar racks, including the micro rack, to thread the rope around the brake bars in the correct orientation. Reverse threading of the rope is possible and can cause the descender to pull free from the rope when weighted. This risk is the primary reason for always conducting a safety check of the descender before removing a backup cow's tail or ascender. Unlike a J-frame rack, with a U-frame rack, brake bars are not added or removed to adjust friction. Friction can be increased by pushing the bottom bars of the rack upwards, which causes the rope to take tighter turns. Even more friction can be added by pulling the tail of the rope up and wrapping it around the upper hyperbar. If the micro rack is equipped with a second hyperbar, then rope can continue to be wrapped around both hyperbars until the desired friction level is achieved. To reduce friction, begin by unwrapping the rope from the hyperbars, and further reduction can be achieved by pulling down on the lower two brake bars to spread them out. You can lift up on the tail of the rope to reduce rope weight in high friction situations, but you should never feed rope into a brake bar rack. Without rope tension holding it in place, there's a risk that the fourth brake bar could swing open, which would quickly result in dropping from four bars to two bars, and an uncontrolled rappel is the likely result. For short, low angle pitches on very fat or dirty rope, some cavers use a low friction rigging configuration that uses two brake bars and a wrap over the hyperbar. This is an extremely risky configuration and is not recommended by the equipment manufacturers. I would also discourage the use of this technique because a simple slip or trip during the rappel could result in disaster. If the tail of the rope were to come off the hyperbar for any reason, then an out-of-control rappel is virtually a certainty. If you use a short frame micro rack and find that it frequently creates too much friction, then you should switch to a long frame. It should be possible with a long frame micro rack to manage these high friction situations without the need to use the two bar rigging method. To lock off a micro rack, Bring the tail of the rope up and over the hyperbar. If you have a lower hyperbar, then bring the rope down and under it, then wrap the rope around the backside of the tension rope, feed a bite of rope through the bottom of the frame, 
Twist the rope. Wrap it over the hyper bar and cinch it tight. If there is no lower hyper bar, then simply wrap the rope over the top of the hyper bar, take a bite of rope and feed it through the bottom of the frame, twist the bite and cinch it down over the hyper bar. Note that the bars can be reversed on the frame so the rack can be used left-handed. This left-handed bar configuration is used by some right-handed cavers who prefer to have the swing bars open up rather than down. A micro rack should be inspected before every trip. The stainless steel brake bars should last a very long time, but they do eventually wear out and can be rotated or replaced. The top two bars see the most friction and will wear more quickly. If any of the bars wear to the point that a small hole forms, then they should be replaced. It is possible to spread out the wear by switching the second and fourth bars. The first and third bars can also be switched if they're both hyper bars, or they can be flipped over. To flip a hyper bar, you'll need to use a hammer and vise to reverse the pin, which is held in place by friction. The frame shouldn't see significant wear, but it should be inspected periodically for damage or sharp edges. Check that the nylon lock nuts are tightened such that at least one row of threads is visible above the top of the nut. The second and fourth bars, also known as the swing bars, are designed with a slight hook on the open slot so they can click into place. It's sometimes the case that these bars become difficult to snap closed or come open too easily. The gap in the slot opening can be adjusted. To close the gap slightly, tap on the end of the bar with a hammer. To increase the gap, put a metal bar into the slot and pry it open. There are many places to find micro racks, but I would recommend you check out OnRope 1. This caving gear retailer and manufacturer was started by legendary caver Bruce Smith and is now owned and operated by cavers William and Carolina Shrewsbury. William and Carolina have been involved in the caving community in a variety of service roles for more than 40 years. They are extremely knowledgeable, helpful, and a couple of the nicest people you'll ever meet. They have an online store and attend most major U.S. caving events. They carry the full range of BMS micro racks and parts. I'll put a link to their website in the description below.